What is up, everybody? It's your boy back at it again with another big ball e buying on. Today, we're going to be checking out something very interesting. Hold on, let me check, fix my camera real quick. What the heck's going on here? Okay, we're going to be checking out um, Frederick the Great, right? Um, the king of Prussia um, or something like that. Was he a king of Prussia? The, I don't know, maybe like the chancellor of Prussia. I'm going to say king of Prussia. I don't know. I don't know if he was a king or not. But anyways, um, it's a short documentary off of um i think it's like a it's like a history channel um it is called the H history matters so go ahead and subscribe to them the link will be in the description down below if you guys are new to the channel welcome if you guys are returning viewers welcome back we post videos every single day i'll ask that you guys subscribe uh, you know obviously subscribe to the channel if you're new and you know if you're not then go ahead like the video like the video if you're new um like the video if you're not new that's that's what i gotta say um, I don't know. I've been st stumbling over my words today. I just woke up, so my words are kind of just all over the place. Words, what are they? I don't know. We're just here on this world together. Um, let's go ahead and dive nose deep into this video and see exactly what we're working with. Los Goots. 1648 and the Thirty Years' War is over. This completely devastated the Holy Roman Empire, but a certain state, the Electorate of Brandenburg, Prussia, ruled by a certain Frederick William since 1640, did oh. gain some territory. Jesus. So, a brief overview of Brandenburg, Prussia. Brandenburg, Prussia. Interesting. So, I, I've always asked, what is Prussia today? What is Prussia today? Like, Prussia just seemed to be completely, like, wiped off the face of the earth. Or it just evolved into something else. Brandenburg um this is the same brandenburg i think this is is this east germany it was Pru was prussia east germany because i thought prussia was its own thing its own country i don't know whatever i guess it was ruled by the royal house of hohenzollern it was mostly protestant it spoke german and as the name suggests it was divided into two territories oh brandenburg, geez. whose capital was berlin was oh what brandenburg was part of prussia bro Okay. An electorate within the Holy Roman Empire. That's crazy. This meant that Frederick William, also known as the Great Elector, could cast a vote on who could become the next Holy Roman Emperor. This was important because it meant that he could elicit bribes from candidates and it also gave his territories there greater rights and prestige. The uh. other half of his territory was called Ducal Prussia, whose capital was Königsberg, which was outside of the Holy Roman Empire, but was a vassal state of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Oh my thus God. giving it the problem of having two different overlords who one day may want different things. True, and that don't look too great on that side. With Brandenburg had recently gained the territory of eastern Pomerania, meaning that Brandenburg was connected to the Baltic Sea, which gave it ample new opportunities for trade. Frederick hmm. William felt that this access to the sea would be great for Brandenburg, and he sought to emulate the Dutch Republic and become a great and wealthy trading nation. They oh. tried, but ultimately, a maritime empire was not Brandenburg Prussia's destiny. The Jesus. Great Elector also sought to strengthen Brandenburg Prussia's international position by introducing a standing army. This was a difficult process since he wanted it to be centrally funded and not paid for, and thus beholden to any of his nobles. Oh my he God. achieved this after a few concessions to his nobles, and by about 1655, he had a standing army of around 25,000. I wonder if that's a lot of people for that time, 25,000 people in a military back then. I mean, I would think that would be a lot of people, right? I mean, like, I don't think anybody had armies with millions of people back in that time, but I don't know, 25,000 people? Meh. The men. So, Frederick William did not wish to remain a vassal for much longer. Two major events happened in the 1650s which helped with this. One, the Tsardom of Russia invaded the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in 1654, and hmm. two, so did the Swedish because their king, Charles X, wanted some more land before the Russians took it all. Jesus. The great elector, on behalf of his overlord, attempted to resist the Swedish invaders, but was defeated. He retreated, regrouped his forces, and, in an act of genius, submitted to Swedish overlordship in 1656. The Brandenburg what? Russians then successfully fought alongside the Swedish until 16. So I wonder if they became one like one entity with Sweden, you know, or like, yeah, with the Swedish soldiers and or not so just soldiers, but the, like Sweden as a whole, you know, since they were fighting together and stuff like that. I wonder like what the fuck. This was when John II, King of Poland and the Grand Duke of Lithuania offered Prussia freedom from vassalage if it switched sides, which it did again. The Great Elector's forces helped the Polish Lithuanians repulse the Swedish invasion. And by what the fuck? Wait a minute. So basically, Prussia couldn't make up his damn mind. First, it was fighting with Sweden to go and fight against Poland, right? And then Poland's like, hey, listen, I could, you know, we can help you guys out, right? Bribed them. And then they, I guess, basically flip flop and like 
Didn't they kind of low-key betray Sweden in a way, I guess, right? By 1660, the war was over and Prussia was a sovereign duchy. Brandenburg was still under the overlordship of the Holy Roman Empire though, but it was progress at least. The standing army that Frederick William had built continued to grow and by the 1670s it stood at almost 40,000 men. Jesus. Brandenburg Prussia was still in financial trouble though, but Frederick William's efforts at encouraging seaborne trade made some headway. In 1682, he granted a charter to the Brandenburg African Company who set up trading posts in African Holy Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, G. With which to sell slaves to North America. It was in 1688 that the great elector's successful reign came to an end due to a small case of death. He was Damn. succeeded by his son, Frederick, who much like his father had lofty ambitions. These were overridden by the need to defend that which his father had achieved since both Sweden and Poland-Lithuania wouldn't hesitate to undo any of it. Damn. He thus made an alliance with the Habsburgs in order to safeguard his realm against them, whilst also providing well-trained troops for the nine years war against Francis Louis XIV. God damn, bro. This is a lot. Like, this dude is, sp is speed running this thing. I mean, obviously he has to because this is like a very, like, it's a, it's a 10 minute history of everything that happened with Frederick the Great, but it's a lot to process, man. It is a lot to process. And if you guys could help your boy out, I'm trying to generate some questions right now, but I'm trying to process what I'm hearing. This is insane. It's a lot, man. This is a lot. <laughs> Might need to do a bunch of videos on this, like in smaller sections, because this is a lot to chew, bro. Like, this is a lot to chew. When Louis had his grandson crowned King of Spain in 1700, the Habsburgs knew that there would be war, which they would want Brandenburg Prussian troops for. But in return for his support, Frederick wanted only one thing. He wanted a crown. Frederick <laughs> Prussia wants one thing and it's disgusting. <laughs> so Frederick wanted the king, he wanted the crown to... to... He was going to crown himself irrespective of what anyone else wanted. Wow, so he turned it into a dictatorship. I mean, it went from a monarch to a, a total dictatorship. Wait, would you think a monarch is a form of dictatorship? Hmm. I don't know. Because doesn't everybody listen to one person and it's like that person's word is law? Isn't that how a monarch works? Eh? I mean... Well, I guess what the what is the difference between a monarch and a, and a dictatorship besides the fact that a monarch has like a king and a queen and stuff? Oh, and a dictatorship is just one singular person. Can you have multiple people in a dictatorship? Hmm. Like, can there be three dictators like running a country together? I guess. I wonder. Yeah, it's interesting. However, since the Habsburgs now needed his professional soldiers, he could get some outside recognition. In 1701, he had himself crowned as the Prussian king, although be aware that he wasn't the king of Prussia, he was the king in Prussia. This was so that wow. he's Wow, the king in Prussia, instead of the king of Prussia. So it's a way where he doesn't have to take responsibility of that country, but he's still a king. Vanessa, Vanessa. Fans in the Holy Roman Empire wouldn't have a king other than the King of the Romans, which was one of the titles of the Holy Roman Emperor. It was also because this territory in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was also known as Prussia, and they wanted to be sure that there wasn't any confusion. Hmm. So, as the king in Prussia, Frederick, now Frederick I, gained a massive amount of prestige, and his coronation marks the beginning of Prussia's rise. Not in geopolitical terms, that is, that was before this, but in historical terms, since the emphasis in Brandenburg Prussia was now on Prussia. Frederick's reign saw him create the Royal Academies of Arts and Sciences of Prussia and was fairly uneventful until his death. <laughs> he was succeeded by his son, Frederick William I. Oh, here we go. This is okay. That that makes sense. These are like there's a lineage of, of Fredericks. Like I didn't realize there were this many Fredericks, bro. I think we just went through like five Fredericks. This was because the previous one wasn't a king and so didn't get a number. The hmm. new king started out by joining the Great Northern War against Sweden from which they gained this territory. Jesus. So Frederick William was an absolute monarch, at least ideally. He attempted to control the local nobility and centralise the state, but the nobles weren't too keen to go along with it. One of the most notable reforms that Frederick William brought in was the School's Edict of 1717. School's Edict of 1717? What the hell is that? Which expanded primary education throughout the realm. Well, oh. most of it. In certain parts, the local nobility were unhappy and resisted implementing it or more specifically paying for it. The king also oh, sought to damn. speed up population growth since Prussia's population still hadn't recovered from the 30 years war. Oh true that makes sense but damn bro Prussia looked like they down bad. Prussia doesn't even look like it was that big to be honest. I thought it was like all of East Germany maybe it's just like just Branden Brandenburg and then a little sliver of like Poland I guess. Oh god, that's a tiny little section, bro. He did this by once again emulating the Dutch and inviting many thousands of Protestants from across the Holy Roman Empire to settle in Prussia. Hmm. Protestants at this time were, generally speaking, more literate and held specialist trades, meaning that they could provide an economic boost to Prussia. The reforms of Frederick William I weren't simply limited to things such as trade and education, there were also a great deal of reforms to the military, which stops being surprising when you learn that he's also known as the Soldier King. It 
the so the so what the what? Hold on, go back. The sol the soldier king the soldier king. The soldier oh, okay. It was during his reign that the army grew considerably, necessitating an increase in the size of the Prussian bureaucracy. Army recruitment was streamlined and tactics were improved. Mm. Frederick William I also ranked serving soldiers above civilians and serving noblemen above their peers, which created Whoa, wait a minute. So obviously from what it said here, I'm just repeating what he said. He had it set up, so Frederick the First had it set up so that the soldiers were treated like royalty, civilians were treated like crap, nobles were treated like royalty, their counterparts were treated like shit. That's crazy. Created a culture that valued the army and encouraged everyone to join. Oh, okay, okay. He's like, well, you don't have to join the army if you don't want to, but if you don't join, I'm going to treat you like dog shit, <laughs> to be honest. That's tough. This is why by 1740, the Prussian army was 80,000 strong. 80,000? The size of the army is why Prussia has a reputation of being very martial and has famously been described as being an army with a state or being hatched from a cannonball. Jesus. Frederick William I's reign came to an end in 1740 when he died and he was succeeded by his son, the most famous Prussian of all, Frederick II. Frederick II. So is that Frederick the Great? Known as Frederick the Great. Ah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, all right, we're getting somewhere now. So Frederick had inherited a large, well-equipped and well-trained army. In I feel like he's gonna fuck it up, bro. Since his father was a prudent man, he had lots of money too. I like the little animation. He's like, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> this, uh, this didn't just fall in my lap. <laughs> I made this shit. But then I feel like his son is about to mess it all up, bro. Frederick, Frederick the Great about to fuck it all up. Also, he succeeded the throne at a time when all of the major powers in Europe were either bankrupt at war or having internal issues which gave him freedom to maneuver. To maneuver straight into Habsburg Silesia, that is. He did this just after Emperor Charles VI died and was succeeded by his daughter, Maria Theresa. She would inevitably be dealing with all sorts of succession issues and so, as far as Frederick was concerned, may as well grab a free Silesia. This started the First Silesian War which saw a quick occupation of most of the province. Damn. Damn! Yo, he was not playing games. He started invading. What? What the freak? The Austrians counterattacked the next year, but the Prussians, with their well disciplined professional army, managed to defeat the Austrians at the Battle of Molwitz. This battle actually saw Frederick flee the field, but his field marshal, Count Kurt von Schweren, went on to defeat the Austrians, which taught him not to run away. Oh, okay. He's like, bro, you can't be leading us and run away like that, dog. Like, you gotta lead the charge. Which is a weird thing to think about back in the day, right? Why would you have your leader lead the charge? when that, that same leader is coming up with the battle strategy. I feel like you would send the soldiers out there and they would protect the hell out of you while you come up with a, a plan so you have direction. Because if you get clapped up and then you get sent off to the to the heavens, you know what I mean? Like your your whole army doesn't know what to do. They're headless, like they, they're literally headless. They're just running around like they have a general plan they're following, but if something has to change, you can't make any calls because you're not there. You don't exist anymore. Somebody sent you to the clouds, my guy. So I don't know. Like, I, it, it was a really weird way to do, like, to war back in the day, you know? At this point, all of Europe wanted in, and so, War of the Austrian Succession. Oh. However, in 1742, Prussia and Austria signed the Treaty of Berlin, which relinquished Austrian control of Silesia to the Prussians. Damn. This peace treaty would last for a whopping two years before, again, Frederick declared war on Austria just to make sure they couldn't take Silesia. Jesus, bro. What the heck? Frederick seemed like he was aggressive, my guy. And Frederick kind of aggressive, bro. In 1745, the Austrians confirmed Prussia's ownership of Silesia, an extremely wealthy province, and hereafter Prussia can be considered a great power. Oh, so wow. after Austria, Russia, and France made an alliance in 1756. Whoa, it, they made an alliance to fight against Prussia, bro? Austria, France, and I think that's Russia right there. What the hell? Next, Prussia quickly made one with Britain. Okay, Britain, I know it goes hard in the paint, bro. Like... To be honest, I can't think of too many wars Britain has lost besides the revolutionary. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> Frederick was convinced that Austria was going to try and retake Silesia, and so he made his move and invaded Austria. Wait, no, he didn't. He invaded Saxony. He did this to take its army and money for himself to Damn. lessen the burden of fighting Austria. This kickstarted the Third Silesian War, which dragged everyone else's allies, including the already fighting Britain and France, into it, Christ. and suddenly, Seven Years' War. At first, things went well for Prussia, but as the war dragged on, things turned against Frederick and the Russians advanced, taking Eastern Prussia. Damn. Fortunately for Frederick, the pro-Prussian Peter the Third succeeded to the... My war. question is, how does a country that massive not take over a country that tiny like within seconds i mean russia is freaking huge it is so big it is so fucking massive i know like the size of a country shouldn't matter but doesn't that like imply that there's a mother freak ton of like people in um russia like there's probably like what like like there's gotta be more people in russia than america right especially especially at the time like 
well, I'm not saying there's probably like what at least 80 to like I'd say 100 million people there and stuff and then you you would think like a lot of that might be army based so how the hell did they not just annihilate Prussia like get this little mm off my map you know like that's crazy I don't know maybe not maybe like they have like a very small amount of people living in Russia like that's a gigantic ass country and I know it's 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 not about how the size of your army because you could have millions of people um join an army and like fight a small army but the small army could easily dominate the bigger army because of sheer, sheer strategy it's all about strategy I feel like so I guess I just answer my own question because I think Japan took out China right like Japan completely obliterated China. And China is a whole ass billion person country, dog. Russian throne and thus called off the war and returned everything, which was nice of him. After France was defeated by Britain, Austria and Prussia made peace and agreed that no territories would change and that hundreds of thousands of people had died for nothing. With hmm. all of this in mind, it would be easy to see Frederick the Great's reign as being nothing but a series of wars, but he was a prudent monarch and a reformer too. He strengthened the economy by freeing up trade within his territories. Jeez. He stored grain after good harvest so that when the bad harvest came, his people wouldn't starve. Hmm. His realm also saw early industrialization, but a significant part of this was because he simply nicked Silesia. Prussia also played host to the United... Silesia, yo, that's not even a place anymore. Or is it is silesia a place does that does that actually exist right now or what, what what's going on with silesia yo silesia doesn't even seem like it's a real place anymore like because prussia is not a place anymore so what happened to silesia what happened to all that to produce one of the most famous intellectuals of all time emmanuel kant who argued that frederick was the embodiment of enlightened absolutism and that he was so enlightened that unwavering obedience to him wasn't a burden but a privilege oh wow frederick's ambitions weren't limited to silesia he had designed whoa 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 a burden whoa. but a privilege frederick's ambitions weren't limited to silesia whoa so frederick's ambitions weren't limited to silesia what the hell they're getting kind of close, man. Um, was Frederick, uh, was was he into dudes? That's interesting, man. Nothing wrong with that. Just I don't know. That's that's unexpected, bro. Unexpected, my guy. He had designs on Polish Prussia since he wanted to connect his territories. The Prussians, Russians and Austrians conspired to place a candidate on the elected Polish-Lithuanian throne, which they did in 1772. Oh One God. problem. The new ruler, Stanisław II, didn't go along with this and started to strengthen the Commonwealth. What the As hell? such, the three powers opted for a different route. They openly and violently dismembered the Commonwealth. In 1772, the three powers reduced the size of Poland markedly in what is called the First Partition of Poland, because fun fact, there were more. The what? first partition saw Prussia gain this land, Polish Prussia, finally connecting the lands of Prussia with Brand Polish Prussia. This is confusing, bro. What the fuck? Brandenburg. And finally allowing Frederick to change his title from the king in Prussia to the king of Prussia, oh, since now go. he owned all of it. Frederick's reign would last until his death in 1786. I like how they put the little death sound. It sounds like a little thumping noise. If y'all heard that, that's funny. His so. legacy would be to bequeath a great power to his nephew and successor, Frederick William II. Because apparently in Prussia there was some sort of a name shortage. Anyway, Frederick II left Prussia a much stronger kingdom than the one he had inherited. It was off these foundations that he and his forebears had built that Prussia would rise to eventually unify Germany. Jesus. Prussia had risen from being both under the overlordship of Poland, Lithuania and the Holy Roman Empire to having ripped territory from both and establishing itself as a great power. Wow, they came from nothing, my guy. But then what happened to Prussia? What happened to Pr Prussia is gone. Like, but I want to know how it's, how it like, I don't know, got eliminated completely. Like what happened? Most of this can be attributed to the military and economic reforms of Frederick and his predecessors. If you had to pick a territory that could one day threaten Britain, France, Russia, and Austria, then Prussia likely would not have been your top choice. Yet through the reigns of four long lived and visionary sovereigns, Prussia would go on to do just that. And much of this success can be attributed to Prussia's professional standing army, which gave it the capacity to punch well above its weight. Oh my God, it's like fight. It's like fight me, motherfucker. <laughs> pick fights with everybody, man, and won most of them. That's insane. Frederick's army was the envy of much of Europe, but be aware it wasn't invincible, as would be demonstrated in the coming wars with France. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and thank you for watching, and a special thanks to Thomas Gestrich, Adam Harvey, Winston Kaywood, and James Bizonet. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Very, very, very thorough. Very, very, very thorough documentary. Oh, my God. Okay, what the heck, bro? What the heck my guy like i i this is this is a lot so prussia basically had like i mean the, the apparently they love the name frederick so um 
technically there are like what like 11 different fredericks and stuff like that i'm taking a wild guess because i didn't count all the fredericks that were, that were there but can say that um it basically built itself up to be a dominant power uh well initially it was under control by like what the holy roman empire um lithuania and um i want to say france like they were saying before but of course they kind of like wiggle their way out of that and became their own thing dominated some countries around them a lot of like yo this is this is a lot to process i'm not gonna lie a lot to process because to be honest i i did not know anything about prussia like i've reacted to videos you know about prussia and stuff like that and even in those videos i've said to never learned about this in school man never learned about this in school like prussia the fuck i thought there was a typo i'm like isn't don't, don't they mean russia bro <laughs> don't they mean russia my guy but anyways y'all let me know what you think in the comments down below very interesting stuff wanted to check that out because i kind of like the historical side of uh german history and from what i've been told prussia was basically east germany or prussia was what east germany is today kind of part at least part of it i don't know you, you let me know if, that, if that's accurate or not but that's pretty much it love you guys like comment subscribe i'll see you soon bis später leute ich boy ciao well 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 what a pleasure it is to see all of your beautiful faces at the end of this lovely video subscribe if you haven't already i'm sure you know as i've mentioned in the past we do have a discord that's linked in the description down below and we would love to have you a part of the world's greatest community ever bray gang Yes, if you've made it to this point in the video, you're officially a part of the community. So go ahead, join the Discord server. Link is in the description down below. And we also have other social media as well, like Instagram, Twitter, we're live. We, we go live on Twitch quite, quite often as well. So I, it would behoove you to, you know, go ahead and subscribe to the Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash James Bragang. Join the cause and be a part of the greatest, literally the greatest community ever. Okay, it's simple. Just go ahead and do those little things. We're trying to grow on all these little platforms and everything, and it really means a lot. Now, I know you guys stumbled up across the channel, and you're like, what does this guy post? Like, what kind of content does he post? Reactions, vlogs, pretty much whatever comes to my mind. All right, it's random content. I don't know what I'm gonna be posting 10 years from now, but I do know that you can stick along for the journey, and it really means a lot. Now, for every single person that subscribes and follows, all of the accounts that I have made, and the, all the links will be in the description down below, that's an automatic entry for any future giveaways I decide to have. I'll remind you when the giveaways take place, but you'll be surprised what I will be giving away because you guys have supported me so much up to this point, and it's only right that I do the same thing back. Thank you guys so much for being amazing, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Peace.